Access granted. That intro is more appropriate than ever because I've got my hands on another BFG or by freaking golly that's an insane gamepad from PDP. There are three insane cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement with this controller, but if those don't matter to you, which it very well might not, then by fucking golly this is a controller that should be in your palms, especially for $180 considering it carries a two-year warranty, has four remappable rear buttons, and takes everything I liked from the BFG for PlayStation and the $80 wired Victrix for Xbox, throws it into a wireless package that comes in two colors and does a lot lot right, has a lot of parts that I really do enjoy. Three big setbacks, if those do not matter to you, this will be a absolute recommend. Let's get it. This is your controller captain, we've reached 6900 feet, go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller captain out. A quick disclaimer to my audience, the stallions and stallionettes, this controller, both controllers, the black one that's going to be giving away and the white one that I'm keeping for myself like a greedy little boy, were sent for review by PDP, which I greatly appreciate, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. As for the packaging and included accessories on PDP's latest and greatest, the Victrix BFG, or by freaking golly, it was an impressive controller when it was wired on Xbox, but now that it's actually wireless, I'll probably pick it up a lot more. The black one is just here for moral support and the box will not be opened. This is a licensed Xbox controller, so if you're one of those that is vastly concerned about the great Xbox controller ban. Tons of misconception around that topic, but I think I've done my due diligence to debunk it to the best of my abilities. Some of the key features on the side, if you want to pause the box, you may do so. Now, a little pinch and zoom action. Let me get a little closer. That's some small font. It is almost identical. In fact, I would deem this identical to the PS5 variant that I have reviewed on the channel previously, and I was not surprised that there is an included carrying case, because even the $100 wired Xbox variant does include the same carrying case, although it'll be black to match the black controller, white if you get the white variant, but this will hold all of your loose accessories and also provides a decent amount of protection. As you can see, there is still a good amount of flex or give there, so you can actually click in the thumbsticks through this carrying case, which isn't the best. I'm gonna get this one out of the way. The first stallion or stallionette to type BFG down there in the comment section is gonna be walking away or sprinting or trotting or however you maneuver with this controller. Doing my due diligence, there is nothing underneath this plastic tray, this Recolta Plastica. One piece of documentation, not really a quick start guide or instruction manual as there is no actual instructions on to what to do with your controller, but there is a QR code, which we'll be scanning in just a second, which hopefully gives you some kind of, yeah, there we go, product quick start guide. How do I use the damn thing? I know how, but a new customer that picked up their first pro controller, they're going to be savagely confused by all these new niblets and doodads. The included accessory department has always been very nice on PDP Victrix controllers, not the entry-level PDP controllers, the $40 joints you can pick up on the shelves of Walmart and Best Buy, but the Victrix Offshoot, which is the pro controller brand of PDP. They've always had very good included accessories. A carrying case with a nice braided purple USB-C cable, which by the way, I can't actually remove this without taking off this Velcro strap. It's actually attached to the case and then you have a separate snip and throw right there. One thing I really don't like about this cable is going to be this huge Tootsie Roll, which provides nothing in the means of cable management. I hate having extra shit sticking off the side of my cables, making cable management a real pain in the wiener schnitzel. No dust cover on the A or C end. Not the most flexible or lightweight thing in the world, but it is long enough to be satisfactory. And keep in mind, this can just be for charging because this is now a wireless controller. One of the key features or most unique features of this controller is going to be the fight pad. So you can actually replace this right module, the right thumbstick, the typical face buttons with this fight pad, which is going to give you six mechanical tactile clicky buttons. Great for beat em ups. You're going to have two octagon shaped thumbstick gates. So when you're on the outside of the thumbstick gates, instead of having this full circular range of motion like you're typically used to, if you're playing retro games or maybe 
fighting games, for example, where you want eight distinct directions, then you can replace these thumbstick gates and limit your motion with the thumbsticks. You also have your dongle or receiver, the controller being the transmitter itself. We will be testing the input lag or delay of this unit in this video. Then underneath this foam block, which does pop up, you are gonna have an additional D-pad, which is a very unique shape. I've never really seen anything like it. It is a hybrid, but instead of having a raised four point, it's almost like the circle is what's sunken in or kind of melted in with this. I've never seen a D-pad like this before. I'm not a huge fan because it doesn't hit the finest points of either a four point or a wheel. So this hybrid's kind of like the best of neither world. I've always been much more of a fan of the stock pre-installed D-pad, which I think feels great. And with this included tool, which is also purple and branded Victrix, you can actually loosen these up and then swap the modules. So if you'd like symmetrical side-by-side -side PlayStation sticks, you can do that. Or if you want offset Xbox style sticks, you can go for that as well. One thing to keep in mind is that if you do want to go for those side-by-side -side symmetrical PlayStation sticks, they are actually going to be about a quarter of an inch closer than a native PS4 or 5 controller, making it not nearly as comfortable in my personal opinion. So if you are going to pick up this gamepad, I'd recommend just rocking it in this Xbox offset layout. You're going to have two included thumbstick cap options, which are going to be held in this plastic bag, I guess, to keep fingerprint oils and dust and debris clear of them. This right stick, which they call the sniper stick, looks almost identical to the high stick with the Elite Series 2 because it is very narrow, flat, and tall. Although this does provide more grip than the Elite Series 2 because the rubber or silicone compound that PDP went with is a lot grippier, not only in the center where you have this cool little crosshair design, but also this line section around the outside as well. I will say they are very small. I wish these were a little bit wider to give you more surface area on your thumb. Same thing with this dome stick, very reminiscent of what you're delivered with the Elite Series 2. This is always what I run on the left and then that high stick on the right. Now these are just held on with friction and pop off with a little bit of elbow grease. Oh wow, that's actually pop off really easily. I like that. Instead of having to feel like you're jacking on the modules, they just pop right off on you. Also, they are purple, which cosmetically looks really cool. These pop off and snap on very easily in comparison to almost all swappable thumbstick caps that are plastic and held on with friction. Obviously, the metal magnetized joints just snap on effortlessly like the Elite Series 2 and Razer controllers, but these are an absolute joy. One thing that needs noted, and I didn't really know where to mention it, but I guess the unboxing section is the perfect place to do it. There is a strong chemical smell that I could smell as soon as I open the controller. And when you get a deep whiff, put your nostrils right inside the carrying case. It definitely smells like a meth lab. Not that I've ever been in or around a meth lab, but you know, you just assume it smells like hard chemicals. And you might be curious what these little plastic pegs are because I was, is this an additional included accessory or something? No, it's actually meant to hold this foam block in place. You can see it's got the female ends right here and it just snaps into place like, <gasps> Okay, well, I can't get it one-handed right now, but you see what it does. I'm very excited to see when you scan that QR code, it does take you to the instruction manual for this specific controller. A lot of times out of laziness from the manufacturer, it won't even take you to the specific controller, but not even instruction manuals or software support. It'll take you to the homepage, the landing page to look at controllers. The third language down is going to be English, and this is what the software instruction manual looks like. You can pinch and zoom, and there is colors. Small note of something I'm not necessarily stimulated by, and, the fact, and that is the fact that this instruction manual is is URL through Shopify.com, not like PDP or their specific website. Also another note, so we don't need to stay huddled around my cell phone, you can actually go to the listing for your controller and then click on download product page. You will get this PDF document, which you can save to your PC. I'm just gonna read it here. English is the third language. And real quick, a couple of the notable features of this controller that are unique to this controller. You don't really see it on any other gamepad. And I wanna mention it here. The swappable modules we already touched on. You can flip them around. Tournament lock mode. Since this is designed to be a competitive esports controller. I say that with a silly tone because almost any controller has the potential to be used in competition. <laughs> this has been the marketing shtick or push of the wired Victrix, and this has continued on to the wireless variants, the BFG PlayStation, BFG Xbox, and that is going to be the tournament lock mode and all these tournament specific features that you're going to be an esports lord with this controller. It's got features specifically for the esports world, such as tournament lock mode, which actually prevents accidental presses of buttons like Xbox view, menu, share, function, and profile file, which apparently accidental presses of can get you disqualified from tournaments. I didn't fucking know that. That sounds so stupid. Like you accidentally hit the pause button and you're disqualified. That sounds so kooky to me. Yet another reason I guess I'll never be competing. Competing? <laughs> Yet another reason I'll never be competing. That and it's just not fair to the competition if I actually start slapping them like that. This is how you're going to engage tournament lock mode. If you are a tournament cock and you want to engage tournament lock, 
this is how you're going to do it. You can program the back buttons on the fly from the controller. Fantastic. Hallelujah. We are going to do a demonstration of that during the rear button section. There is three profiles which are color coded with these LED indicator lights and you can swap between them on the fly. Another unique feature for specific games, Capcom games, is going to be this SOCD mode adhering, which lets you engage specific modes, specific rule sets for games. Fucking cool. You do have a recalibration mode if you've run into any issues. So this is important if you are having any issues with your thumbsticks where you start to develop drift, you can recalibrate them. You might not even need to take the steps in my fixing stick drift guide because you can do that from the software of the controller. By holding down the function button and a combination of D-pad buttons, you can adjust your chat game blend as well as your volume from that 3.5 millimeter jack, which also supports Dolby Atmos. And when I say support it, you get a lifetime subscription. So whenever this is connected to your PC or console, it's going to let that platform know that you do have a Dolby Atmos approved device. And when you launch the Dolby Access app for PC or the Dolby, I think it's still called Access app for Xbox, just search Dolby in the Xbox store and you'll see it. You will be able to engage Dolby Atmos virtual surround, which is object based surround sound, hence why it's been my favorite for years. I've tried the THX and the Windows Sonic and the Dirac and pretty much every virtual surround you can think of. I have tried it, tested it, listened to it. Atmos is the bee's knees and the mule's nips. As for the cosmetics of this puppy, the black variant I have in front is the PlayStation version, which you can see is pretty much identical to the Xbox variant. It's just now Xbox is getting a little bit more love. The only cosmetic difference is that the PlayStation home buttons down there at the bottom and the Xbox jewel is up there at the top. That's primarily because there is no touchpad that needed made space for up there. And that rubber goddess, the original wired $100 gambit for Xbox, which can commonly be seen on sale for 80 bucks on Amazon. The only gripe I have with the cosmetics from the front of this controller is going to be this plastic jewel for the Xbox home button, which has been reused from so many PDP and Power A cheap controllers that you can find at Walmart for $40. So many game pads, it's ridiculous. And they just look like shit in my personal opinion. For example, that's not even white. That's kind of an off eggshell vanilla color. The black version does look incredibly slick, although I gotta say this white and purple does go incredibly hard. I do like that the thumbstick bases have that plum purple, which is kind of glossy. I think it'd look a little bit slicker if it was matte. Same thing with the face buttons, not having that gloss reflective finish. Around backside, I love that the regulatory sticker is very small. I wish it was white or gray to where you could still read the text, but it was a little bit less conspicuous back here. Overall, this is a very handsome controller. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. Repeat, eight out of 10. As for the ergonomics or comfort, this is definitely a unique beast, unique being very comfortable. The shape and shell design is identical to an Xbox One controller, except instead of being a little bit more rounded on this edge, it drops off a little bit more aggressively. And also it seems to be a little bit wider in this section. And upon busting out the soft tape measure, it's only about a quarter inch wider right here, but that definitely changes the ergonomics. And I would say this would be a comfortable controller if you have medium to larger size hands. I really do like the materials back here. I couldn't tell if it was rubber or plastic. It's definitely rubber, but kind of harder and shouldn't really break down. I don't want to dip into the rear button section, but they do not cut into comfort negatively at all because they're sunk almost flush with the rear shell. They do kick up at a little bit of a weird swoosh or angle here, but they are in no means uncomfortable. In fact, I would say this is a very comfortable controller. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Build quality, I'm going to break it down like this. PDP does not have a negative quality control reputation. They're primarily known for very, very cheap third-party game pads, like $35, $40 wired Xbox controllers you can pick up at Walmart that seem to just plug along other than a hard drop or using and abusing your controller in a bad manner, they seem to last a very long time. And this does extend to their pro controller brand Victrix, which seems to have a little bit more premium materials, plastic, rubbers, no crazy panel gaps. The plastics don't feel cheap, porous, hollow, tinny. What I'm saying here is there isn't a negative quality control reputation that I've dug up for PDP. And if you have any issues, there is a two year warranty on this bad boy. As for the D-pads or direction buttons, I did mention that I'm not a huge fan of the second included option. It's cool that there is another variant, but I'd like if that was just a typical four point, like most other pro controllers as opposed to that squeezed tube of toothpaste got melted in the microwave looking shape. The one that's pre-installed looks and feels the best in my personal opinion. The D-pad and face buttons are high response elastometer membrane switches, which are just typical rubber membrane switches. There's a little plunger mechanism under there that's gonna make contact with the PCB and actuate your switches. And they do feel okay. I will say the actuation of the D-pad isn't the most satisfying. It doesn't give you any kind of a tactile click in any of the four directions. And there is not separate diagonal gates. So there's not an eight way micro switch or anything like that. It's just a typical, basically like a stock D-pad with a different cap or cover. And that's probably the one component I'm left a little bit flaccid by is going to be the D-pad. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a five out of 10, just right down the middle. Now, as for the face buttons or action buttons, not a huge fan of that glossy design, but I will say they feel great. They're serviceable for membrane switches. And the fact you have those four additional buttons on the back, there's a high chance you'll remap those back 
there. Same thing as the D-pad though, left a little bit flaccid in the face button department. And what's unfortunate is that Victrix slash PDP doesn't sell any replacement modules. So if you get stick drift, which I know we're jumping ahead to the thumbstick section, or you get a stuck in face button or a broken D-pad, it'd be cool if you could just replace these modules for like 25, 30 bucks, as opposed to having to throw out a $180 Pro controller and get a new one, unless you're in the two year spec of warranty and then you get yourself a freshie. But something like the DualSense Edge, those replacement modules were available from Sony launch day on both Amazon and through PlayStation Direct for a reasonable price of $20 per module. So I'd like PDP to move in that direction as well. Face buttons are also going to be receiving a five out of 10 for me. Although this has the fight pad, which is a slightly sound dampened micro switch. I've got the PSB of G over here because it is the identical fight pad. It hasn't been revised or changed or anything over the last two years since that PS version was out. This is the same switch. If you're a fighter player and you do not have the size for a full size hitbox, uh, when I say hitbox, I'm talking about a, a fight pad, one of the big arcade style joystick whack-em-ups, then this is a good alternative for you if you want all that contained on a regular size controller. Just like if you don't have the room for a full size racing sim setup, the Forza Thrustmaster controller I reviewed on the channel because that has a little steering wheel, which gives you a ton of control. Same thing here. This isn't the best means of playing a fighting game, but as far as the casual nature of a controller is concerned, oh yeah, those are nice. Having those micro switches feels very nice. While actuating the switches of the fight pad feel good, I really would have liked to see PDP revise the surface plastics as they are this gloss material which collect fingerprints and micro scratches like nobody's business as you can see. This isn't a very heavily used game pad. I actually don't pick it up nearly as much as I'd like to admit I do and it's fucking scuffed up on the fight pad. As for the accessory button suite, that's going to be pause, select, share, the Xbox home button. Whoop, just turned on the controller. You also have this niblet down here, which is going to give you control of your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I like to see that is included. A lot of controllers are ditching that. Also like to see that there is Dolby Atmos support through that. I'll give you a little demo at the PC explaining what does that mean, Kevin? How, how are you getting Dolby Atmos out of this 3.5 millimeter jack? Should I jack myself off? Uh, no and uh, uh, no, or yes and no. It'll be explained on the PC. I think these buttons look really cool. They're also raised far enough from the front shell, large enough in a decent place to where I have no gripes or complaints about the accessory button suite whatsoever. Love the Dolby Atmos support down there. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. But I don't know what you're concerned about, and it ain't my killer ass trigger discipline over here. It's going to be these thumbsticks, analog sticks, joysticks, front niblets, giblets, doodads, micrads, whatever else you want to call them. They're here. They're good. Now, they're not magnetic Hall Effect thumbstick modules. They are still potentiometer joints, which could get stick drift for you at any time. Having said that, check out my debunking controller myths and misinformation video from a couple weeks ago where I say, stick drift sounds like kind of a myth to me, even though I know it's not. It happens. It's a legend, a folk tale, old wives tale, if you will. <laughs> stick drift. Get please. But in all seriousness, if you do develop stick drift on either one of your modules, go ahead and check out the guide in the description below where I walk you through a couple of software programs to defunkify your modules. You can also clean them shits too, or desolder them and solder in new ones. Nobody wants to do that, and you probably won't have to because there's a two-year warranty on this controller, and it could happen. They're potentiometer joints. But again, I've had potentiometer controllers for four plus years that I've gotten hundreds of hours of stick time on them, not even a hint of stick drift. Real quick, I was grabbing the other thumbstick caps out of this carrying case and I wanted to quickly mention, because I forgot it earlier, you do have a little cloth grab strap here, which you could hang it off a bag, but you do not have a pass through for a USB-C cable, so you cannot charge the controller through this carrying case like some of its competitors. So I'm gonna tell you this right now, you're not gonna wanna snap control freaks on the domed or the sniper stick because they already have the height and shape that you probably want. You're gonna wanna use these stock low concave joints, which are pre-installed. Now, I I recommend taking the caps off before installing Control Freaks. Now these are the X boxes, which are the smallest diameter and they fit absolutely perfectly. They couldn't fit no better. Because of that, I'm not even gonna try PlayStation and Switch, just kidding. I'm actually doing it right now, loose and wiggly. Comes right off. Switch, a little totter, but also loose and wiggly. So go with the Xbox variants on the stock, low, concaved, pre-installed caps. Or use no Control Freaks and go with the dome on the left and the sniper bad boy on the right. That's, that's, how, that's how I'm going to be rocking it. But let's take these thumbsticks over to the PC and do a little bit of testing on Project Zero, shall we? <laughs> I want to take a good stern look on these potentiometer thumbstick modules and gamepad tester. We're going to see a perfect resting value of 0 0.0002 every time I move these to and fro on the vertical and horizontal axes. And then I stop. So that's good. We're not seeing any out of the box stick drift. I didn't experience any in gameplay. Didn't expect to see it here in GPT. And we do not. Also, no weird inner or outer dead zones baked in. Oh, whoa, that's crazy. It does also reach past 100% on the outside of the thumbstick gates, which I hadn't seen up until recent, and now I'm seeing it more often. So a little bit of a 
above average what we're used to seeing with potentiometer thumbstick modules, which are generally in the 12 to 16% average error rate. Now, lower is better here, and there's no directions where my inputs aren't being registered, no real cause of concern here, and these are on par with potentiometer thumbstick modules. So we actually have found a component that is different from the PlayStation variant or the previous wired $100 Gambit, and that is going to be the bumpers. The shape and actuation force is all they have in common. I will say the plastics feel a lot better on the new variant, and the sound produced is quieter and a lot more secure. Check it out. Old joint, new joint. Bring my titty nips in so you can closer to the mic. Yeah. New bumpers sound and feel better, and I like them on the original, like these a lot more. I'm gonna go ahead and give them an eight out of 10. You can actuate them with the meat ear finger as well as the tip. It almost feels like there's a stabilizer bar, even though there's a little swivel or hinge mechanism over here, it's very evenly distributed. These bumpers feel fantastic. As for the triggers, they are called the clutch system, which are gonna be five way set them and forget them, so to speak. What does that mean? Well, unlike typical trigger stops where they're either on offs or three ways, or they're off until you turn them on and they become a digital tactile mechanical mouse click. These are a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and disable them on the left. Boom, you have your full pull. But now you can fine tune exactly where you want that trigger to be stopped. So I'm going to stop it right there, right about halfway. Then go ahead and pull this clutch button, release it. And now you can see the trigger does stop at that halfway point. To deactivate it, bam, I have the full pull again. Now, if you want the full trigger stoppage where it cuts out about 97% of your trigger pull, almost all of it, don't squeeze the trigger at all. Click on the clutch button. You'll hear a little click and you can sneeze on these bad boys and you're dumping the mag. I mean, that is a very taut pull. In fact, almost a little bit too light with the software because once you click these on, you barely need to touch these and you're activating. So what I do is actually go to the second step or notch. Oop, too much, that's the third step. Third step again. There we go, perfect, that's where I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and give this trigger system a nine out of 10. I've liked the clutch for the longest time and the fact that the plastics up here are now softer, more supple, feel better on the fingertips. Bumpers are quieter, triggers still have this killer clutch system. It's gonna be a nine for the trigs, nine for the bumps. The four rear buttons are very ergonomically pleasing. Where you wanna naturally hold this controller, you do have the bottom two covered by your ring fingers and the top two covered by your middle fingers. This wouldn't be an ideal setup if you are an individual that likes to cover all four of the buttons with your middle fingers to reactivate these two with the tip and these upper two with the ball of your finger by rolling upwards. I do like that layout as well, but I do prefer four fingers for four buttons. A little disagreeance me and my handsome Discord moderator have. These aren't very loud, but still give you a nice tactile click whenever you actuate them. They are not mechanical, still a membrane switch. Most importantly, the shape and sizing is pretty perfect and you can bind these on the fly. In order to do that, let me cut a little light so you can see this button on the back. You're gonna select the profile that you want. There are three available. Cool thing is the LED light on the front of the controller also changes to let you know what profile you're currently in. Once you've selected the profile that you want, so we're gonna start with this green one, you are gonna hold down the remapping button and a rear button that you would like bound. So we're gonna start with this bottom sucker. We are in remapping mode, it is now flashing green on both the back and the front. Now you can press anything on the controller, and yes, that does include clicking down on the sticks. Get a little rapid flash to let you know the binding was successful. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Bam, and the next one, bam. So very, very fast method of binding these on the fly. I love that. I am very satisfied. I'm gonna give this rear button suite an 8.5 out of 10, an 8.5 out of 10. The software program to control PDP and Victrix controllers has been good all the way back to 2019 when I tested my first PDP controller overlaying a little B-roll. Yes, that is a hotel. I was staying there for nine weeks for a Navy course for my job. Living out of a hotel is never fun, but it's a little bit more fun when you have a janky ass third party gamepad in your hand. On the Victrix homepage and if you're on the PDP homepage and you'll click Victrix here and vice versa. If you're already on the Victrix Pro Controller expensive gamepad section, PDP is going to be their cheaper entry level game pads. What you're looking for is apps over here. If you have a PDP controller, not a Victrix Pro controller, click here. We have a Victrix Pro controller. So we're going to get Control Hub, which controls not only the $100 wired variant, but also the $180 PlayStation and Xbox wireless joints and looks just like this and is available on the Xbox console as well as the PC looks and performs identically on both the console and PC. You do have as much control as the competitors, if not more so. You can run diagnostic tests. You can also set up custom sensitivity curves for the thumbsticks, response 
response curves, I should say, as well as the minimum and maximum squeeze for the triggers, things like that. As for battery life, the BFG does sport a 2000 milliamp hour battery, which sounds massive, but really only nets you around 20 hours of battery life. That is advertised. However, in practice, you're going to get about 15 to 18. And there is no fast charging supported. It is going to take about three to four hours to get a full charge. So battery life, I would deem uh, mid, just straight up mid. Going wired with the BFG to get our first input lag or delay test, and we are going to see eight milliseconds, which aren't great. So upon our first poll, we are going to see eight milliseconds of input lag or delay on 125 hertz stock clock when going wired with the BFG, despite the manufacturer's claim that the onboard processor is a 500 hertz polling rate. And this has been a common, not only point of confusion with people that buy the Victrix wired for Xbox thinking the fastest Xbox controller on the market, that actually requires an overclock, which only takes place on the PC side of the house. So even if you were to overclock at the PC and then bring the gambit to the Xbox, it is still not the fastest Xbox controller. You'd be getting faster speed out of a $40 Gamester G7, which allows you to use the Nexus app to overclock within that software to 1000 hertz is your polling rate. I'm going to run another one. So it is very consistent, zero outliers, minimum and maximum, very close to each other, jitter low as shit. So you're going to have a very steady, rock solid, consistent connection, but not a very fast one if you don't overclock. 7.8 milliseconds on 125 hertz stock clock. Let's go wireless with the dongle. The controller does take kind of a long time to pair up to the dongle, at least the first time you connect it. You need to plug it in, power on the controller with the jewel, and then wait a couple seconds. It'll pair up and give you a purple light to let you know that you are paired and ready to... Oh my god, that's not good. What is happening here? These are numbers that are so much bigger than I'd like to see. <laughs> I see what's going on here. Oh, that's the only noise I can make to... to I'm going to articulately explain what's going on here in just a second because this is great data. This is fantastic information and why I use X input test gamepad LA. It's cool. I'm not going to bash the program. It works good. Do you get precise statistics on your controller like this? No, you, you don't. I use X input test and I'm going to pick up an Arduino single board computer, get the input lagger delay tester equipment to measure on the PCB. But lo and behold, that testing is usually identical or very close to what you're going to get in X input test or gamepad LA. Just be Speaking from experience and nothing less here, what we're going to see is a very inconsistent connection as it is stuttering and sputtering between some very low numbers down here in the threes to some very high, almost twelves. We are going to see five outliers, which are going to be numbers that don't agree with the rest of its comrades. It's not these elevens in here. It's going to be some really big numbers, most likely at the top. There's one of them. Consistency is completely lost with this dongle. Minimum, maximum, hella far, jitter, higher than I'd ever like to see. Let's run another one. Also, it takes quite a while for this test to complete because the computer is not receiving its thousand samples but way less consistent as you can see because the numbers are all over the road. You're going to have some really quick connection and some really slow connection, which is going to average out to eight milliseconds. So the exact same speed as going wired. Although just manually scrolling through the numbers, I would strongly advise anyone watching to go wired with this controller, especially if you're trying to play competitive on the PC side of the house. And over here in Gamepad LA, we are also showing 125 hertz stock clock, 100% stability. Looked like I was schwacking off over here, but really I was just rotating the thumbstick. It looked not good. Over here in the Grandmaster Lord of Mice overclocking software, and this controller is recognized as an X input compatible HID device. This is the correct device is when I unplug it, it disappears, replug it, sure enough, she'll pop back up on me. Now, one interesting note is that this is showing four milliseconds of input lag or delay when indeed it is going to be double that at eight, but this is not overclocked on a stock clock of 125 hertz. Let's double it, then let's triple it. Let's start with a very subtle 500 hertz overclock, shall we? Okay, this is the weirdest shit. Now it's recognized as an Xbox gaming device at the 500 hertz polling rate. You're going to see that same controller is overclocked for two milliseconds of input lag or delay when in X input mode. Shall we test the theory? God damn right we shall. All right, whipping and dipping in a circle. We are going to see that that 500 hertz overclock did absolutely nothing as we are still at eight milliseconds of input lag or delay. Let's try a thousand, shall we? But I'm, I, she's probably polling rate locked. That same controller is now overclocked at a thousand hertz hertz. Let's see what she can do for us. Not a goddamn bit of difference as this is going to be pulling rate locked at the board, which sucks to see because the $100 wired Victrix Gambit for Xbox was one of the few Xbox controllers that was not pulling rate locked and you could overclock. How about that wireless dongle? Can we overclock that? Okay, interesting. So going wireless with that dongle, it is already reflecting that it is overclocked at a thousand hertz pulling rate. So we do see this with a lot of wireless dongles or adapters where it does still give you the exact same communication with the PC as if you were wired. So if you've overclocked, it's still going to be overclocked when you go wireless with the dongle. And unfortunately, that is going to be overclock blocked as well or polling rate.
outright locked, if you will. You can't do anything with the dongle or wired. So this is what you are going to get. And that is going to be a major downside, in my opinion. That's the fact that no matter what you do with this controller, whether you go wired, wireless, overclock, stock clock, you're still at eight milliseconds of input lag or delay. Pretty damn consistent, rock solid wired and sporadic and all over the place with the dongle. That, 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 that does suck. As for adapter or converter support, this is a huge con and one that's not going to be included with my three major cons during the verdict section, but this is a big one if you plan on using this one pro controller on multiple platforms such as PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. Because as of now, you simply cannot. Using all of my adapters from Brook Accessories, the Cronus Zen, the 8-bit Goku, a bunch of random generic dongles and adapters I have, nothing was able to get this controller up and running on Switch or PS5. It got my hopes up because the flashing lights became solid on the Brook XE2 for PlayStation and the NS2 for Switch, which in every other instance means that you are successfully connected and you can start using that controller. However, they went solid, but I had no control of the controller. Keep in mind, these converter companies like Brook Accessories are constantly pushing patches and updates that support new controllers added to that ever growing compatibility list. But as of now, this is not one of them. And I do believe that is because PDP also sells a PS5 variant of this exact controller. And maybe they don't want people using converters or adapters to double dip. They want you to buy two separate $180 Pro controllers, one for your PS5, one for your Xbox, if you're somebody that has both platforms, that is. Big old fat con because there are a ton of controllers this price point and cheaper that allow you to play on all platforms with the use of a converter or adapter. As for the pros, cons, and verdict, this is all going to be wrapped into one section for a reason. The pros and the cons kind of counterbalance each other and lead to my verdict. There's a lot I like about this controller. There's a lot of parts, components that I really enjoyed. That specifically being the bumpers, triggers, and rear buttons. The software suite on Xbox and PC is also exemplary. I do love the fact there's a 3.5 millimeter jack, which you can control on the fly, things like your chat game blend, and there is going to be Dolby Atmos virtual surround sound support through that, which is really sick. I like that there's an included carrying case and there's two good thumbstick cap options. There's an alternate D-pad, which isn't great, but it does exist. And the overall unboxing presentation was quite nice. This is a very comfortable controller in hand and this is quite subjective, but cosmetically, I think it looks gorgeous. The fact you can swap modules is cool, but kind of useless other than swapping out the fight pad. That is the only point or purpose of those modules being removable considering PDP does not sell replacements. So if you get stick drift, you still need to buy a $180 Pro controller, not a $20 module. And I don't advise anybody watching doing side-by-side -side PlayStation symmetrical layout with this controller because it puts the sticks closer together than a native PlayStation controller and doesn't feel very good. So the only point of having those modules removable is the fact that you can pop in the fight pad, which does feel good, but not great. And it would have been nice if they could have revised or updated the fight pad to feel and sound a little bit better over its predecessor, which felt good, but not great. I do like the fact there is a two-year warranty, but there are some setbacks that make this a very hard controller for me to recommend personally. First of all, this is rocking potentiometer thumbstick modules that are susceptible to developing stick drift at any time, even coming out of the box with stick drift. That has happened on two Microsoft cores that I've received. And with magnetic hall effect thumbstick modules starting to get better and better, we're starting to see competitors like GameSir, Hyper, AIM, and Ghoulie Kit doing phenomenal things over the last three years or so with these HE thumbstick modules that are far less likely to get stick drift for you. So when controllers come out like the Scuff and Vision or this Victrix still sporting potentiometer thumbstick modules, it's a little bit of a hard sell. Combine that with the fact that this is polling rate lock at the board cannot be overclocked unlike the wired Victrix Gambit, which can be had for about $80 on Amazon and can be overclocked to a thousand hertz, getting you around that one millisecond of input lag or delay. Keep in mind that is only on the PC side of the house because when you drag your happy ass over there to the Xbox, that overclock is no longer in effect as that's just the Lord of Mice overclocking software running in the background that's enhancing the polling rate for you. Furthermore than that, the performance with the dongle is quite subpar. It's not very consistent. The speeds are identical at eight milliseconds, wired and wireless, which aren't fantastic. It should be around four or it should be four or lower Two, even one. We're starting to see controllers with thousand hertz stock polling rates, but this bad boy is slow. And considering this is marketed as being an esports tournament ready competitive beast, input lag or delay really fucking matters. So the fact that the marketing is pushing this as being a fast controller and it's really not wired or wireless. So that in combination with the fact it can get stick drift at any possible time and the fact battery life is quite subpar at advertised 20 hours IRL you're going to get about 15. There's no lights to turn off to squeak out more battery life, but there's no fast charging either. So you're going to have to sit there for about three and a half to four hours to get it topped off. And when there's wireless controllers on the market, like the Elite Series 2 that have 40 hours of gameplay or the Turtle Beach at 30, this just doesn't look that appealing. So overall, it is up to you to make that decision. Do I really care about eight milliseconds of input lag or delay? What do you care about more? Having less than eight milliseconds of input lag or delay, Hall Effect thumbsticks and good battery life, or do the components that I really 
enjoy, such as the bumpers, triggers, rear buttons, cosmetics, two-year warranty, does all that flavor sit on your palate a little bit more sensational and that's more appealing to you? Because if this hand is, is weighing like this, I'm tilting right now, if this hand is heavier for you, then this controller makes sense for you to pick up and it is linked in the description below. If this hand is the one that's dragging down a little bit, the controller is still linked in the description below, but you're probably going to want to pass on it because, well... I just mentioned three huge cons that for me make it a hard recommend because there are competitors that offer them things in the similar price point. Thanks, Jesus. This. Having said that, if you're somebody like me that's had a great run of luck when it comes to getting stick drift or not getting it, I should say, to the point where you've almost deemed it a goddamn myth or wives tale. Yes, I know stick drift exists because I've worked on controllers for friends and family and comrades that, that had stick drift. I fixed them up for them and sent it back. I know it exists, but me personally, I don't I just I, I, I haven't been touched by it just yet other than those two cores which are you know but if you're somebody that doesn't ever get stick drift hasn't ever gotten it then the potentiometer thumbstick thing doesn't matter if you're somebody that's like i'm never gonna play for a longer than a 15 hour gaming session and i always plug in my controller to charge after each session the battery life doesn't matter for you and if you're a casual console player somebody that's competitive but's never overclocked a controller or didn't know that overclocking existed or you rarely play shooting fighting and racing games where milliseconds of input matter between wins and losses then none of the cons I just mentioned even matter to you and you should absolutely pick up this bad boy. Hopefully I've done my best to help you make a decision. We've weighed the pros and the cons. Wait, opposite hands. This was the cons over here and this was the pros, right? I'm off balance now. We've weighed the pros and the cons and you now know if this is a controller worth picking up. It is linked in the description below. Drop in the comment section below what you think of this bad boy as well as the previous PDP Victrixes I've reviewed. And I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So mollywop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun to tomorrow.